All right, well, we got our week three schedule all set out now. He's decided to switch it up a bit with his caves and labs. Um, oh my goodness, so many hearts. A very kind and considerate person, even if he lacks confidence sometimes. Aw, sweet Shoji, that's so cute. Okay, man, I can't believe we got so many hearts with him already. Let us play at the cave and succeed. Huzzah. Ugh, these clay sediments are a pain. I grumbled inwardly as I wiped the sticky dirt off yet again. I was on my knees trying to finish the last 25 centimeters. I did uncover tiny bones, but rationalized they weren't worth sketching in the grid. There was a sound of scraping metal, and I turned to see Hendrik climbing down the ladder behind me. What a rare sight! You're hardly in the cave, Hendrik. I know. As a geologist, you'd think it'd be the opposite, but here I am now. He surveyed my square, and I started to get self-conscious, wondering if I was doing something wrong. I hope you don't mind the tight squeeze. He knelt down next to me, and I hastily moved to my haunches, offering him my knee pad. He shook his head. Don't worry about it. I'll just be here for a few minutes. I wanted to observe your digging techniques. After I made myself comfortable again, I leaned forward to start excavating. He watched, rubbing his chin thoughtfully. How am I doing? Hmm. Is your wrist well? Any pains from repetition? Nope. Sherry gave me some pointers to avoid it. Great. Mind if I borrow your trowel for a second? Sure. I cleaned it, handed it over, and he grasped it nimbly. I've noticed your wrist is slightly angled, and you're simply scraping or trailing your trowel through the dirt. It's painfully slow. Isn't archaeology supposed to be painfully slow? <laughs> he held the trowel so it was parallel to the dirt. It is, but even you should be able to dig through a few centimeters a day. Align your trowel like so, then make a nice downward flick with the wrist. The blade of the tool effortlessly sliced through the clay, much cleaner than before. Don't be afraid to make large cuts. This helps you avoid blurring the sediment lines as it's neater and easier to distinguish. I'll do this one this time. His movements were broad yet graceful. It was strange. Even with a, such a simple action, I could tell he was experienced. I watched in awe. I have to say something obvious here. You're good at this. I've been doing this for years, so I have a slight inkling on how to excavate. Also... He extended his arm upward toward the middle of the square. The trowel smoothly grazed over the dirt until it bit into a slope. Your square isn't entirely vertical. If you're worried about digging too far inward, use a ruler to double check. Thanks for the tip, Hendrik. Gein problem. If you need me again, I'll be happy to assist. Just don't start taking me for granted. <laughs> okay, that was cheesy even for you. Hey, that bun is a classic. He returned the tool to me and stood up. Glancing in Kyler's direction, Hendrik rubbed the back of his head, mulling over how to approach him. Finally, he tapped Kyler on the shoulder. Kyler begrudgingly stared at him before activating his implant. We. Oui. Kyler's voice struggled to keep an even tone, while Hendrik's voice had a shaky cheerfulness to it. I was wondering if you needed any help or had any questions. I'm fine. I don't need your help. Kyler return returned to his square, ignoring Hendrik, who sighed ruefully. <sighs> it's not the best time to ask, even if my curiosity is killing me. I returned to my work while Hendrik climbed up the ladder, most likely to make his rounds with the other students. Staring at my trowel, I recalled Hendrik's movements, then attempted to mimic them to the best of my ability. Slice cleanly, huh? I inspected the work Hendrik did and made similarly sized cuts into the soil. The clay was sticky and cumbersome, but it was not as bad when I had my trowel angled. The rest of the day was uneventful, but at least my progress was much better. I stood up and stretched. It was a good time to take a small break and jot down some notes in my journal. I'm gonna get some fresh air. You know, Kyler, you're gonna get hypoxia if you don't go outside every now and then. I'll be fine. Okay, later. Sorry for admiring Hendrick's procedure. <laughs> Completely famished by this morning's tasks, I scooted onto the bench with a bowl of mushroom soup. Grabbing a slice of Swiss cheese, I teared it and dropped the pieces into the soup. What are you doing? Adding cheese to my soup? Is that what people do in America? It's what I do. 
I guess it's common enough. I haven't really thought about it. A few seats down, I noticed Kyler also eyeing my actions before silently returning to his meal. Was adding cheese to soup really that bizarre? I heard a holler behind us, and many of us automatically turned our heads toward the driveway. A tall woman dragged a suitcase behind her, while her free hand waved toward one end of the eating area. Hendrik immediately stood up and approached her. Rose, glad you could finally make it. I didn't think you'd arrive this early. No thanks to you! You practically ditched me in the middle of those core samples! What can I say? Analyzing core samples is boring. Oh no, don't pull around with me, Mr. Ace Geologist! Her stern expression faded, and they both exchanged a cordial grin as they leaned in for a cheek kiss. Augustan and Sherry gathered around her as well. Would it be okay to introduce myself to? Maybe later. No, it feels so rude if I just barged in there and introduced myself. I was a student under Sherry, after all. However, I was still curious. I glanced in Kyler's direction. Hey, Kyler. Kyler? Who is she? Rosemary. She's part of the main team. She does lithic work and all that. Stone tools and technology. Huh, that's pretty neat. Usually she arrives earlier to teach students about identifying Flint. He trailed off, feeling that his answer was self-contained enough, and resumed eating his meal. Rosemary is... Chantel delivered a concise summary, and Joan nodded happily. Of course, that means yet another lecture. If only they covered the stuff I want to learn. <sighs> Chantel slumped over while Joan fidgeted anxiously. They exchanged a few words in French, and Chantel seemed touched. Ah, Joan. What did she say? She says she'll stay with me for the whole eight weeks. Most students, if archaeology isn't their elective, only need to stay for four at the most. I mean, I could break it down, but I'd rather get it over with in one go. Then... Kyler doesn't have to be here? This is his fourth time. I guess not, but it does look good if you're trying to break into archaeological work. Either way, I don't want to pay a hundred euros a week to dig in dirt, but I guess that's his thing. He's probably not graded on this. He willingly paid to volunteer? She tilted her head, pondering before concluding what a, with a clair- blah, 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 blah. Concluding with a careless shrug. Mwah. And you're here until the excavation ends? Uh-huh. Be a shame if I only came here for a few weeks, considering how far I've flown. Here till the end. She grinned, proud of her ability to follow the conversation. Her hearing comprehension was superior to her verbal skills. It made me wish I could pick up French faster. I swirled my spoon into my soup until it was cheesy enough to form strings when I lifted the utensil. Satisfied, I swallowed a mouthful. Joan stuck out her tongue at the sight, causing Chantel to laugh. <laughs> Stop giving her culture shock, Melissa. She's very sheltered. It's just cheese. Goodness. Before we knew it, lunch was officially over, and it was time to return to our assigned tasks. Hopefully I would be able to properly introduce myself to Rosemary later. I had a feeling I'd learn a lot from her. And she's also pretty awesome, gotta say. Oh no. Volunteering. Yeah. Getting all the empathy. Tense. Why was the air around here so tense? I pondered that while I stirred my cheese-drenched tomato soup. Both Joan and Chantel, who previ previously sat and talked with me, had disappeared. Many students paced by the museum entrance. Some checked their phones or glanced over the shoulders of others to view their screens. Meanwhile, DeAndre spread mustard on his second or third sandwich. At least he seemed unfazed. What's going on? Everyone appears to be anticipating something. The exam results are being released today. This late? After a casual shrug, he took a large bite of his sandwich. He wiped his mouth before speaking. Usually they're released earlier, but they had some problem with the data or entry system or whatever. They must be super important if everyone looks this anxious. It's a make or break it deal. If students don't average out a certain percentage, they have to repeat a year. You seem rather calm. Compared to the other students, you aren't sweating bullets. That's because most of them are first or second years. I see. You're probably used to this by now, then. Too used to it. Fortunately, this will be my last semester, and then I'm free. 
The only thing left is to finish the selective requirements, since I'd hate to waste a semester on a single course. A more expensive course, too. Jealous. At least you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. I feel like I barely started and it'll never end. I felt a playful flick on my forehead. It'll be over before you know it. Hang in there. Before I could respond, one of the students announced something in French and everyone tapped away at their phones again. Results are up. From the reactions, DeAndre didn't need to clarify. However, he set the sandwich down and fished out his phone. Um, let's do this this time. I stood up and uttered a small, later, not wanting to distract him from seeing his results. I was about to grab the zipper to my tent when I heard a soft cry behind me. Chantel tapped at the tent she and Joan shared, speaking in French. The only response inside were muffled sniffles. Aww. Is everything alright? Joan failed a music theory course. Even if the delivery was blunt, I liked Chantel's honesty. I don't know the details. Apparently it was a simple music reading exam with an instrument of your choice. To a rudimentary score. Joan's amazing at flute, but performing... She gets overwhelmed and does badly. That must be hard on her. You're trying to talk to her now? Yes, but because I've been supportive of her dream for years, she's having a hard time facing me. We did this before. Let's try this. I wonder if she's feeling guilty. What about your grades? Could do better, but solid and nothing to complain about. I'm more worried about Joan. The first semester was hard enough on her. Well, I hope she feels better soon. She has a good friend at her side who cares. Thanks. You should probably go for a walk or return to your tent to read. It's going to be a very emotional day for many students here. Good idea. Aw. Poor Joan. Poor Chantel. Poor everyone. Oh. Well, this is a new scene. Can't we at least open a window? The fumes are giving me a headache. Oh. Hendrix stood up. After a lo loud screech, a loud screech, the window flew open and we were greeted with a gust of wind. My arms huddled close to my body. Cold. Here we go. He left the window ajar, although it amplified the noise of the rain splattering against the foliage and pavement. At least the sour smell of the nail polish was not as strong. I could see why lab work was preferably done outside. It felt cramped cooped up on the second floor. The earthy smell of the remains and their repulsive coating wafted across the room as well. Hen, come here! Hmm? Rosemary cursed and glanced up from her laptop from the other side of the room. There was a projector hooked up and she jammed a flash drive into the USB port. The white screen was already down and everything was running. She was preparing a si- a shla- good grief, why can I not speak? Blech. Okay, I'm gonna drink some water and reset my mouth. <clears throat> okay. Let's see if that helped. She was preparing a slideshow presentation, but needed assistance. I glanced down at the millionth cave bear phalanx, and delicately swept off the dirt with a toothbrush. Cave bear finger bones sure reminded me of human ones, besides the obvious size difference. To my left, DeAndre groaned as he dipped the nib pen back into the bottle. Ugh. This is impossible. How do you write so tiny? And how is this a flake or whatever? It looks like any other stone. He showed the flint to me on his outstretched palm and I studied it. I think it's the angles? He shrugged carelessly. Doesn't even closely resemble an arrow point. This is such a- The rock rolled off his angled palm. He tried to save it but fumbled. I darted my hands out, slapping the rock between my fingers awkwardly, right as his hands covered mine. Oh, DeAndre! Why? Why do you why do you do this to me when we're not on your route? We both froze and exchanged glances before we started laughing. <laughs> <laughs> if our movements didn't draw attention, we certainly did now. What are you two doing? We hastily removed our hands, none of us wanting to admit to Hendrik that we nearly dropped a rock. I was admiring her nails. I see. 
Don't mean to sound crusty, but it's probably best to save the beauty talc for after. <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. We both returned to our tasks, and DeAndre leaned over, lowering his voice. Thanks for that. I didn't want to repeat of last time. Last time? Oh, uh, when I dropped a... Never mind. It's not important. He placed the flint back on the table. I'd rather not mess up again. That's all. He trailed off, slumped back in his seat, and I decided to give him his space. A few minutes later, Hendrik approached the table sheepishly, then tilted his chin toward the laptop that Rosemarie frantically typed on. Hendrik announced something in French, then delivered a translation as he glanced in my direction. Anyone flew in a computer? We can't seem to get the projector working. I know somebody. DeAndre and I exchanged glances, and he stood up to get a better view of the screen. He sat down promptly, looking apologetic. Sorry, mate. I use a different operating system. I didn't consider myself super projector savvy, but I did do presentations in classes that use them. Well, why are we not getting Shoji? Fine. I could take a look, I guess. I make no promises. I only have some experience. It was worth a shot. Rosemary stepped out of the way as I leaned over her laptop. I navigated the mouse and glanced at the light shining on the projector screen. Everything seemed to be in working order, so... Was it already reset? Yes, I reset the laptop. Ugh, technology! Maybe we should use the overhead projector, Hendrik. I still have those old transparencies. I have no idea how to work it anymore. Besides, I want people to enjoy learning archaeology, not think we're fossils if we resort to using that. You already forgot? Remember when they used to be ubiquit- ubiquitous? Ubi ubiquitous? Remember when they used to be ubiquitous? Professors would fight over when they could use them. I hated being the one designated to wheel those in. While they chattered, I tinkered around with resetting both the audio-visual device and the laptop. There has to be an easier way. Wait, shouldn't Shoji know this? I know he mentioned vintage electronics, but he did admit he was better with the newer stuff. Shoji! I wrapped the table next to the laptop, then stood up straight. I think I know someone that can help. You can't fix it. Uh, it'd probably take me too long. I'm sure Shoji knows more than I do. Who? He's one of the students here, but I don't personally know him that well. Quiet, kid. Don't worry about it. We'll have plenty of time to fix it, since we don't plan to start the lecture until after dinner. Ah, yes. About that. Cringing at his coll colleague's reluctance, he narrowed his eyes knowingly. Don't tell me you didn't finish the actual slide presentation. Uh, just, uh, a uh, few teensy-weensy details. I lost last year's when my other laptop got stolen. <laughs> you know Augustan is expecting it tonight. I don't want to disappoint everyone and postpone it. I also don't want to upset your uncle. I'll go get Shoji. Good idea. It didn't take long, but we were both drenched when we returned to the second floor. Shoji discarded his sweater and brushed excess water from his hair. Projector issues? Rosemary's eyes scanned him up and down, and she nodded in satisfaction. Ah, yes. He looks like he knows what he's doing. He does seem to be a computer expert. Uh. Shoji self-consciously glanced away as he wiped his hands on his pants, but nodded under her serious gaze. Eager, she gestured to the laptop, and Shoji sat down, his hand resting on the mouse. Restarted? Laptop- Nope, the water didn't help my mouth. Laptop twice, AV device once. I see. He navigated the mouse and punched a few keys. I knew he was toggling between resolutions, but other than that I couldn't follow. Huh. He stood up, adjusting the cables between the devices. Then he flicked a switch on top of the projector. <laughs> oh! The whole room was now bathed in blue light from Rosemary's desktop screen. She and Hendrik glanced at each other, startled by Shoji's expertise. Wow, that was fast. I'm impressed. What was even the problem? Shoji seemed to squirm in his seat, losing the composure he had before. He tapped his feet together. Um, 
the connection was loose and the AV setting was set on TV mode. He stood up and scooted out of the way to allow Rosemary access to her laptop. Amazing! Kids these days are so tech savvy! What next? Being able to fix that old overhead projector. It's probably even older than you. <laughs> she finished with a light-hearted laugh. Shoji's lips twitched, but he said nothing. It was then he noticed the other students glancing curiously in his direction. Should I give him a confidence boost? Uh, he would probably hate being the center of attention. Let's just get him away from here and congratulate him in private. Seeing him extremely uncomfortable in the spotlight, I stepped in, trying to shield him without being obvious. Glad that's settled. You have to finish up your digging now, right? It'll be clean up soon. He nodded fervently and went to grab his jacket. Thank you. Anyway, thanks for your help. Thanks a million. At the front entrance, I watched Shoji as he stuffed his feet into his muddy shoes, which were discarded outside. Thanks again for that. I mean, just look at that rain and how miserable it is. Smiling, he thrust an arm through his sleeves and adjusted his jacket before zipping up. I didn't mind. I'm glad I was useful. Is it for the flint? Oh. Oh no! The lights flickered, then went out completely. We heard Rosemary cursing and some of the students reacting upstairs. Shoji and I exchanged glances and I let out a weak laugh. <laughs> uh, can you fix that too? I don't think I have the resources to fix a power outage. Uh, I probably don't need to return to the cave now. I don't think it'd be safe to clean up. It'll spare you from treading through that mucky path again. Is this the same day that I would have been caught with Kyler in the cave, I wonder? Hmm. I'm gonna go help tidy the lab. I doubt they'd want to keep working in the dark. Uh, wait, Melissa? Yeah? He averted his eyes and pushed up his glasses. Aww. Um, thanks for helping me earlier. I honestly don't do well in those kinds of situations. I got your back, boo. Don't worry about it. Not everyone likes attention. I've got your back. Later, Shoji. Later. Ah, so cute. Just so cute. So, so cute. Love it all. I should check my email. My parents must have... As I opened the lab door, I immediately froze. Augustan ranted angrily at Rosemary, who gestured to a chip stone with tiny flakes surrounding it. Promise Sean to touch or manipulate any. This is for my research! The two paused and turned to me, and I cowered at their annoyed stares. As I shrunk back, Augustan approached and slammed the lab door shut. E. Not wanting to loiter, I whirled around and collided into someone. Now I was awkwardly sandwiched between that person and the door. Sorry about that. I glanced up, instantly recognizing Kyler's tall frame. He appeared baffled and gazed at the door. Muffled voices still argued behind it. He took a few steps back to allow more space between us. Did something happen? From what I could gather, Augustan is mad at Rosemarie over something. Why, were you planning to enter the lab too? Yes, I was planning to ask a few questions, but it's probably not the best time now. Yourself. I wanted to check my email. My laptop is in there, but I don't think they'd appreciate it if I slipped in to nab it. You could try using the computer upstairs. That old thing? Well, it's worth a shot. It was then I heard the faint clicking of a keyboard upstairs. I doubted Hendrick would remain in the lab with that sort of tension going on. Sure enough, halfway up the stairs I spotted his auburn ponytail. I glanced back down at Kyler. Maybe it's something you can ask Hendrick? I don't like going to him. Kyler never acted this juvenile, and it caught me off guard. I wondered if he'd mistranslated his words, but his body language suggested otherwise. If you're curious, I could ask Hendrick about the situation. Hesitantly, Kyler took a step forward and I cheered silently. I doubted Kyler would mention his original question to Hendrick, but maybe engaging him in conversation would loosen up whatever friction the two had with each other? I trooped upstairs energetically and gave Hendrick a wave. Hey, working up here now? Sort of had to. Couldn't concentrate with the noise downstairs. So... I'll do this one this time. 
may I use your laptop for a second? I need to check my email. Hendrik reluctantly closed his application, then shuffled the chair back a few inches. Sure, knock yourself out. Just don't take too long. Great, thanks. While I logged in, Kyler spoke up. What are Augustan and Rosemarie bickering about this time? Oh, Mom emailed me. Despite my advice, she insisted on gluing flakes to a lithic core found in the A3 layers, since we've been able to uncover debitage belonging to that core. Aw, oh, that was a fancy restaurant Dad took her to. I wish she took pictures of the food and not just the decor. And she ended up using the wrong glue. It's going to be a pain to disassemble. Why do you keep her around? All she does is cause problems for everyone. Oh, there's a link to a bunny video. Should I click on that? No. Better not. I read the email. That's good enough for me. I logged out and withdrew from the computer, in time to catch Hendrick's irritation. Why? Despite our disagreement, she is excellent at her job. If anything, her insight has been valuable. Affronted, Hendrick stood up from his chair, shooting Kyler an aggravated glare. Kyler flinched slightly, but his eyes narrowed again. I tensed up, wondering if I should say something to appease them or leave before it got too heated. I only say that because I'm thinking of the excavation team's best interests. You're getting ahead of yourself here. You're acting like you're one of us already. Just because you're in my uncle's good graces doesn't mean we'll hire you once you graduate. And we're not intending to hire anyone soon, especially not an inexperienced person fresh out of university with only a few months of field work under his belt. Kyler lowered his arm, his eyes looking both resentful and distraught as if the notion had never occurred to him. Recovering, he clenched a fist, his voice rigid with determination. I've excavated here longer than most people. I've certainly spent more time in the cave than you. I'm highly qualified. There's much more than just digging diligently in the same old square. Oh, four. I didn't care if I was an outsider. Guys, guys, quit it! I firmly stood between them before their voices escalated even louder than the commotion downstairs. There's already one dispute. Can we not have another? <sighs> I'm gonna leave you guys to this this time. But I, can ne I don't think I can ever just do that. <laughs> I'm gonna have to do this next time. Anyway, I'm out. You guys can continue bickering if you'd like. Sorry for that, Melissa. <laughs> Later. Meh. You guys are so juvenile. Come on now. You're big, strappy men. Ugh. Him. Augustan, why does this vertebra look so pitted? Hmm. Looks like silly cave bear got eaten by smart hyena or lion. Those are bite marks attacking the anterior thoracic vertebral column. And lower spine, petite fleur. Eee! I squealed in my seat as the brush poked my back. If that is from layer A2GR, I believe we already have three bones from that same animal. Must be tough piecing it all together. We have collections going back to 80s. We are still 50 pieces found decades apart. Did people always know about this cave? How was it found? You are aware of popular movie with an archaeologist to carry his whip? Oh yes. Because of that movie, many kids were inspired and explored region, pretending to find treasure. Silly kids stumble on cave here. Who knew an inaccurate portrayal of archaeology would lead to a real archaeological discovery? We still get an occasional student who is disappointed this cave is not a booby trap temple. I would lose all my help if that was the case. Maybe it is and we just haven't dug the traps up yet. If so, you will be the first to find out. <laughs> <laughs> he laughed and excused himself, and I glanced at the chewed bone. Maybe I should dig on a higher level instead. Hmm. Hmm. Ow, I need a band-aid. Oh no. Oh no. Oh man, lab is still difficult. Why does everything I touch turn to dust? 
ambled over to the tent area, wondering if I should kill time by gaming or reading. It was then I spotted Shoji sitting on the edge of his air mattress with the tent flap open. There was a sketchbook in his lap and a pencil sticking out of his mouth. He was erasing something intently, his eyes furrowed in concentration. Quietly, I sauntered over and leaned to the side to catch a glimpse. What you doing? His head jerked up in surprise as he dropped the eraser, his wide eyes peering over his glasses. Um. He mumbled over the pencil before taking it out. Once the shock wore off, his feet shuffled closer, hesitant to reveal his work. Um. Drawing. This went we really well the one time. I think I'm going to pick it again. You definitely are different compared to online. Shoji flinched from the comment and he fiddled with the corner of the page. Y yeah, I'm not good with talking to people in real life. I'm not sure if this will help in any way, but it's just me. I enjoy our online conversations, and I hope you'll be able to feel comfortable around me in person, too. I'll try. Thanks, Melissa. Good. Now, what are you drawing? Can I look? It's nothing amazing, honest. Despite his modesty, he handed over the notebook and anxiously awaited my feedback. I examined the rough drawing and realized he was sketching his surroundings. Half of the tents were shaded in, while faint lines resembled other tents and trees. <clears throat> Excuse me. Why here? I had the urge to draw all day, and my mind was full of ideas. But when I finally got here, I blanked out like the paper and didn't know what to draw. I decided to sketch everything around me. Even so, this is really good. It's practically a photograph. I held the drawing in the air, pretending it was in a frame mounted on a wall to compare it to its real counterpart. Shoji fidgeted with the pencil, his eyes averted. Really? I mean it. You don't mind if I look through your sketchbook, right? Shoji shook his head and I crouched down by the tent so we could both see the sketches. Noticing the awkward position, Shoji shuffled to the edge of the air mattress, and I sat down beside him appreciatively. I flipped to the very start of the sketchbook, greeted by doodles of various circles and triangles. I wondered if it was a drawing exercise. Um, you could probably skip the first few pages. It's just me testing pencils out and... Wait, these are perfectly round circles. You can draw perfectly round circles? What is this sorcery? I gave him a mock glare that continued to browse through the sketchbook. When I stumbled on some familiar fictional critters, Shoji cringed as if he had completely forgotten, while I let out a squeal of delight. <gasps> Ooh, we got ourselves a fellow Mocket fan! I love Mockets! I should have known. A fan of the series? Since the first game, I grew up with it and I still buy every installment. I was wondering when I'd find your video game art. It's what got me into drawing. I loved the designs and wanted to draw my own monsters. Then I learned some of them were based on real animals, and my art shifted to realism over the years. Um, I'm trying to find my own art style. I occasionally draw some of the original mockets once in a while to compare progress. I flipped to the second to last page before the tent sketch and noticed life drawings of various hand poses. They were all crossed out with an X, followed by a scribbled French sentence that was barely legible. What's this say? <laughs> he leaned in to tap the writing. It says, uh, curse my inability to draw fists. I find hands the hardest to draw. Our shoulders grazed and he jerked away apologetically. To ease his nervousness, I pretended not to notice and handed his book back. Are you seriously thinking of pursuing art in college? He visibly relaxed and contemplated the question. I'd like to, but it's hard to be financially secure career-wise. Not that I need a luxurious lifestyle or anything, but it'd be preferable if I didn't have to worry about bills or affording groceries. I thought maybe I could go into computer engineering instead and practice my art on the side. I'm currently thinking it over. I am in my first semester, after all. Computer engineering all the way, encourage him to go into art, or agree he'll figure out what works best. Mm, what should I pick? I think he's right about the whole art thing, though. Like, even though he's talented, it would be very hard to do it career-wise. And he always goes for computer engineering, the other route, so maybe that is the way to go. 
It makes sense to go into computer engineering. It sounds like a stable path. You'll work with software and programming, right? Well, more on the hardware side. I enjoy the physical components and putting them all together, but it does integrate software too, such as building operating systems. With all your experience, I'm sure you'll do fine. I'm not great with computers, but I'm the unofficial go-to person in my family when something goes wrong. <laughs> I hear you, girl. Yeah, growing up with my dad and his gremlin curse, I'm used to fixing computers now. It'd be fascinating to see the designing and building side of it. I'm still deciding, but thanks for your input. There was a holler from the other side of the site. Showed you didn't need to translate that dinner was ready. Sweet, I'm starving. Thanks for letting me look at your sketchbook, Shoji. I adore your art. It was no problem. I'm glad you weren't disappointed. I rarely show people my artwork, and I wasn't sure how you'd react. If you draw something new, be sure to show me. Promise. Ah, So cute. I failed at internetting new! No. Should've done more internetting that week. Oh no. At least I only get a little bit of stress from failing my gaming. Oh no. Dance girl, dance girl. 